Hello and welcome everyone to another video. So, today we're gonna take a broader look to all my five GTX 260 cards, though it's more for this is a 192 core card, so it doesn't really matter. But all the other ones are 55 216 core cards. We have my Gigabyte SOC, a Sparco Accelero card, an Asus card, and the Gainward um, Red card. So, we're gonna be talking about the air cooling stage. And I just kinda wanna test what can you really expect from other cooling solutions and is something like this right here actually necessary. So, right now set up I have the Gigabyte card. This uses the reference uh, PCB heatsink. This 192 core card uses that exact same cooler. It is just the same blower heatsink that you find on everything. And it is currently set up, running Tropics in a loop for a very, very long time while I was setting all of this up. And we've maxed out at a temperature of 57 degrees. This jumps around a bit, sometimes it's 56, sometimes even 55, um, but right now it's showing 57. This is of course with maxed out fan speed. I'm gonna just run everything with maxed out fan speed because we are overclocking here. We don't really care about silence. So. This is what you can expect from a reference cooler. I did swap the thermal paste, so it might be slightly worse um, if you don't do that. But um, yeah, this is what the reference heatsink does. Oh, we, now we went back to 56 degrees. So yeah, it's not too bad. Like blower heatsinks, when you look at something like this right here, uh, 56 degrees is very optimistic for a heatsink like that because the GTX 780 is also very, very <laughs> harder to cool because it puts out more more heat and the heatsink, well, 100% on the reference board tends to not be the same as 100% on a custom board if you connect that fan to it. So blower heatsinks on other generations tend to be rather bad. But for the 1260, it's not that bad, like, we're not even touching 60, and it has the IHS on, reference blower, my ambient temperature is not even all that low, it's actually pretty high. I, um, let's just check it real quick, go over here to my working area, let's check the ambient temperature, yeah, 25 degrees, so that's, uh, that's a rather high ambient temperature. Probably because this has been running for like probably an hour. But yeah, so the reference cooler for these is not too bad, um, which is good because a lot of cards use this heatsink. So, really, the only thing you need to get is just an ambient temperature that's not too high, swap out the thermal paste, and just max the, um, the fan up here. Um, yeah, so that's for the reference cooler, and next I'm gonna be setting up these three. So this one's last, because we all know that this one's gonna be the best one. And then I here have whatever Asus thought is adequate for a GTX 260. And then the somewhat favorite, which is uh, this uh, dual Axio uh, Gainward card, which is said to be the best. Not because of the heatsink. The PCB for this red card is said to be very good, and you can see all the flux on it. I did remove all the can type capacitors, so there's a lot of flux on the card. Uh, I'm gonna redo the cap mod on this, so it looks very awful right now. I will ultrasonic it once I'm done. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna be setting these cards up next, and sort of seeing what we can get out of those. Alright, so the game mod card is set up, it's completed a complete run of Tropics, and of course fan speed's already maxed, and the temperature that we ended up at is 54 degrees. I very briefly saw 55, um, but it's pretty stable at 54 now. And yeah, so it's better than the blower heatsink, which conventional wisdom would tell you that this is better than a blower, it's got twice as many fans, and a, um, instead of all your air going through a small number of long fins, it goes through a high number of uh, short fins, which means that as the air travels through the fins, they um, 
well, th th there's less heat. Like, if you have longer fins, then you have heat in that fin, and then the air needs to travel, like, all the way to the end to reach a part of the fin that's cold, and by that time, well, your air pressure is pretty low, and th th there's a bunch of reasons why blower heat sinks are not very efficient. Um, and, yeah, this is better. Not a whole lot. Uh, we have 55 now. Um, but it is better by, uh, like, two degrees. It's not a huge difference, honestly. And this is not the biggest fin stack. It is actually only, like, this long. If you look down there, the fin stack stops there and also stops here. So, really, it's only, like, a 1.5 fan card because the rest just goes out the side. It is a bit better than a blower, but just because you have this heat sink over one of the blowers, this is not gonna like get you better overclocks based on temperature. You might get better overclocks based on your PCB, because again, this red Gainward palette card is supposed to be uh, really, really good. Um, but from the cooler alone, the blower cards are gonna be basically the same. Like a two degree difference if you just open your window a bit, you can probably get that better temperature without having to use the seat sink. So, this is not as big of an advantage as you might think. And now I'm really looking forward to this. Because we all know this is gonna suck. I really don't know why Asus thought this is adequate, but uh, we're gonna try this next. So, the card's done with its run, and... Well, of course, it's the worst result. Ah, we just went to 61. So, yeah, it's uh, it's the worst so far, and it's certainly gonna be worse than this. Um, but it's not as bad as I thought. Like, this is just a glorified Intel stock heatsink. The card doesn't even have VRM or memory chip cooling. It's just using the passive air that comes through the fins. And it's being helped quite a lot by this fan that I put here. Um, what doesn't help the card is that I, of course, match the clock speed to the other cards. So this thing comes in at a lot uh, slower by default, but um, so that we have the same heat output on all the cards, I did match the clocks to this, uh, which added, I think, almost 100 megahertz to the core clock on this one. So, yeah, considering that, 61 isn't even too bad. Like, by modern standards, 61 is pretty good. Um, but um, this is, well, 6 to 7 degrees worse than the red Gainward card. And that's about where you start seeing a difference. I, I think that that difference in GPU temperature is actually going to cause maybe... Uh, a problem, especially when you go into the like 60 degree range. Um, there's like certain temperature levels where if you cross them, your card drops off. Um, and this heatsink might be crossing into that territory. And it also doesn't help that your memory chips don't really get direct cooling. Now, on the blower cards and also on the red card, there is a base plate with thermal pads on the memory chips which keeps them cool. And the VRM also has, well, actually, on, on this card, the, you can see the MOSFETs right there. Uh, they're not cooled, but the Gigabyte card has a little heatsink here that they wedged under the uh, cooler. Um, now, this card not having that cooling is maybe also going to affect it, especially for the memory chips, which are just completely naked here. They do at least have a little bit of cooling on the other cards. Um, and that might be a potentially very big issue because memory clock is important on these cards. And the, especially because this is on Samsung chips, you might be losing a lot of clock speed from memory chips that get too hot. And with this heatsink, you're gonna have pretty hot memory chips. Um, and yeah, so I think the only thing that remains is testing the Accelero GTX Pro and seeing what we can get out of this thing, which should have a lot more cooling potential considering just how big it is. That is a big fin stack, three fans, and if you just compare it to the Gainward card, that's a pretty small fin stack compared to the Accelero. So I would think that this thing is really, really good, and I hope it is. 
Um, and yeah, we are going to find out. Well, here we are. 45 degrees. That is pretty good. That is 9 degrees better than the second best, which is the Gainward card. So, this big ol' heatsink does definitely do something for your core temperatures. Now, there is one problem with it, which is that if you look in here, this one also doesn't have any direct RAM or VRM cooling. Now, the VRM cooling part is fine, because this PCB from Sparko specifically also comes with a blower heatsink that, just like uh, the Zoltec card over here, just has the VRM completely naked. So I'm not really concerned about the VRM cooling here, but again, your memory chips, which you can just kind of estimate how warm they are by touching the back, and it is pretty warm, are getting kind of hot. Um, now, usually you are supposed to tape some smaller heat sinks on top of them. Uh, my card came with small heat sinks on some of them, but those heat sinks fell off immediately once I removed the main heat sink, and it was also only like four of the. Uh, how many chips it has, I think, like 14. Um, so, yeah, VRAM cooling is a potential issue with this. Now, you could fix that by just having more fans just kind of pointing inwards here, like pumping air in here, um, or actually replacing the fan assembly with something that's more powerful. I do actually have the fan assembly from my GTX 780 Jetstream from Palette, and that fan assembly just happens to fit the Accelero heatsinks dimensions perfectly, and those fans, those move a lot of air, even compared to these ones. Because the Accelero heatsink fans are more optimized for noise and less for maximum performance, so these at full speed are not actually that good. It's just that there are three of them and the fin stack is really, really thick, um, which leads to the pretty good cooling. So, yeah, 45. Um, the other issue is also that the IHS is still on. You can see that there's a metal plate uh, down there below the mounting mechanism. And this heatsink is really designed to use the IHS. You can adapt it. I, I have tried some things. You can adapt this heatsink to work without the IHS, but it is pretty janky. The main issue is, uh, you can see it on the Asus card pretty well, most, well, all of the cards have these 16 volt input filtering capacitors on the end of the card. And pretty much all the cards use this specific package that is very, very tall. It's actually taller than the uh, six-pin uh, power connectors. And when you remove the IHS from the core, um, which makes the heatsink sit like one, maybe two millimeters lower, these actually collide with the heatsink and bend the PCB. You might be able to see how they just fit under there. Um, that causes bad mounting pressure. And that's a bit of a problem. So, yeah, you have to adapt the mounting system, which is janky, and then there's also bad mounting pressure from the PCB bending when you don't use the IHS on this. But in my testing, I saw down to 39 degrees on the GPU, which is another 6 degrees better, which is another significant increase. However, it was very inconsistent because of those mounting differences. Um, so, yeah. For the verdict now, for the heat sinks as you get them, as you're supposed to install them in case of the Accelero, well, the Accelero is, of course, the best. But if you are in a situation where you have to decide between a blower car like this or a heat sink like this, it's not really that big of a difference. Now, you should probably get one of these red gain water palette cards if you can, because they are just... There's just a lot of data indicating that these are the best. They just overclock better for some reason. If you can get one of these cards, get them. And if you get them with Hynix chips, you just scored a... Like, you, you just got a score. Um, so, yeah. But um, if there's any other cards with heat sinks, something like this, and then there's another card that has a blower. You don't have to get this style of heatsink because the blowers are pretty capable for the 260. You should just avoid something like this, <laughs> which isn't hard. This very much looks like a. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, not even the 
fan header is like a proper one. <laughs> like, this card is very, very, very cheap, and uh, yeah, I, I just got it because it came with an LG A775 motherboard. And I was just like, hey, why not? It was 12 euros. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's my buying advice. Now, as for my submissions, I will, of course, be using this heatsink. That's why I bought the card. I wanted the heatsink, not the card it came attached to. Um, I will do some more experimenting with getting better temperatures out of this. Probably involves removing, uh, replacing the fan assembly, and then attempting a without IHS mount, which is janky, but... It does show lower temperatures here, a lot lower temperatures, and even if my hotspot temperature might be not that great, my average is still going to be lower. So I'm hoping it might help. Um, but as for now, this is what you can expect from all the different kinds of GTX 260 coolers that are out there. And I hope this helped somewhat. And until next time, goodbye.